What's up everyone? So in this video today, I'm going to be showing you how to install the Collins adapter to be able to mate a CD09 transmission to a T56 bell housing and then to an LS engine. All right, so everything that you need for your kit is pretty much right here. You want your CD09, um, your cutter, your cutting wheel, T56 bell housing, your T56 slave cylinder, the adapter kit, and then you have to order the spe this special clutch from Collins to allow you to use an 11 inch clutch disc on the spline that fits the CD09. Some other stuff that I got is some dash three brake line that I'm gonna be using to uh, actually extend it up to where my um, clutch master cylinder is. And then I also got an external bleeder because all of this, including the slave cylinder, is gonna be hidden and it's gonna be really difficult to bleed and this is gonna make it super easy. So I definitely suggest getting these parts and all these extra fittings. You can just Google it and you'll be able to find it. All right, so first we're going to take off the um, output to the slave cylinder and we're gonna replace it with one of the, this piece right here. Um, so basically I can use the dash three fitting. So essentially what you're gonna do is there's a little pin right here and you're gonna punch that out and you don't wanna lose it because you're basically gonna fit it back in except with this piece. All right, so I have the dowel pin almost out. Here's a better look so you can see where it comes from. And there you go. So this should just pop out and you take the adapter and go ahead and pop that in. Perfect. So once that's in, just replace the dowel pin and hammer it back through. So now I can use a dash three line if I wanted to and send this all the way up toward my master cylinder. Is. So now what's next is the external bleeder. So this is already kind of like, well, I think it's like uh, three eighths fitting or something like that. So all you need is an adapter, plug, it plugs right in, and then you can use the external bleeder. So just take your wrench, the right sized wrench. All right, so once that's off, take the adapter. So, it's actually this fitting, not uh, the bigger one. I think they sent me an extra one of these for some reason. But um, after that, you take the external bleeder and you go ahead and just screw it on and tighten it down. So now the external bleeder is on and you can basically bleed it with this knob right here. Okay, so after that, I'm just gonna tighten on my dash three line so I can have it there and not have to worry about taking this apart to get it back on later. All right, so there you have it. Slave cylinder is ready. So I'm going to take my adapter plate and bolt it down. Okay, so it is on. The next step is to bolt this onto the bell housing. So let me go grab that. So the easiest way to do this is to basically just lay the adapter plate right on top of the bell housing. So it looks just like that. From there, we're gonna take these bolts and bolt it down. is tightened down onto the bell housing. So as you can see, so next step is to basically move on to the CD09 and we're gonna cut its bell housing off. So what we're gonna be cutting is right behind the second casting line. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my disc cutter set up and then we'll get started.
housing is cut off. So now what we're gonna do is take all the bolts out and remove the face right here, or the face of the transmission. Okay, so I have all the bolts out, so this is just pry right open. Yep. All right, so next step is pretty much get rid of this stuff and then we're gonna throw some degreaser down on the surface and probably take a razor blade to it and get it nice and clean. Then we're gonna RTV it uh, and then pretty much seal the, the bell housing onto it with the Collins adapter. surface pretty clean so I'm gonna go ahead and test fit the bell housing and if I just to make sure that there's enough clearance between some of these like notches that were left over um, just because I don't want to put RTV down and then try to put it on and have it be all messed up and smear and everything like that so I'm gonna test fit it first so I noticed uh, it's touching where this like uh, probably mounting point is for the 350z I tried to go around it and it came out really shitty but uh, I'm probably just gonna have to kind of chop at it until it clears the actual adapter plate. All right, so it should fit now. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the RTV, test fit it one more time, and then put it on. All right, I have the RTV down. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and slap this on. So all that I am doing right now is putting in their provided Allen bolts and tightening them down. The last step, all you have to do is take the replacement for the pilot bearing, which goes on right here, and push it in to where the crankshaft seat is. All right, so to get this in, um, you kind of have to hammer it, but I don't want to hammer this without using like a piece of wood or something like that. And I only have these blocks, so I'm just gonna kind of wait and do this. I don't even have the clutch yet. It actually comes on Monday, so then I can make the transmission to the actual engine. But for now, I'm probably just gonna leave it, leave it here. All right, so another little update on things. I recently found out that I can not use an LS3 cam. Uh, I found that the way my ECU reads the cam positioning signal won't pick up the way that this puts out the cam positioning signal, mostly because the cam sprocket has four bumps on it which works with like these sensors and everything like that. But since I have a 24 tooth reluctor wheel, my ECU doesn't know how to read that. So basically what I have to do is use, a, they call it a one times cam sprocket where it just has like a little half moon and it puts out the exact same signal that the stock cam does to where you can just plug the stock harness in to here with, I, you gotta get like a little pigtail so it reaches and it works. But the issue is I can't use that sprocket because the LS3 cam is a single bolt and the only sprockets that I can use come with the three bolt pattern. So I had a couple of options. I could either pay like $300 to get a new like little control module that translates that to my ECU and take my whole engine apart and swap the reluctor wheels, which I'm not gonna do. It's a waste of money and time. So I ended up just buying a new cam. It's okay, I sold some more like of my old parts, so it's not a big deal but the new cam is actually gonna work a little bit better. It has a little bit more duration and uh, the lift is more consistent. It's basically an LS9 cam, but like revised. So there's no difference in the lifts between the exhaust and intake or anything like that. And 
from what I've seen online, it's been known to add up to like 85 horsepower in these engines just because they're so restricted on air. So any little like modification like that makes a pretty big difference. So in the long run, it turns out to be a little bit better. Plus the LS3 cam, I was going to push the springs that I have to their like very, very limit. While with this cam, it's not pushing them quite as far, but it also is more consistent between the exhaust and intake. So I think it's going to be better either way. Either way, it's gonna add 85 horsepower, which is plenty. I should be around 400, which is gonna be more than enough to what I need to be able to compete in Pro-Am. So I'm probably gonna do that off camera because I'm just taking my engine or the front cover back apart and putting a new cam in. You guys told me to do that once. I am gonna do it more gently because I saw you guys were complaining about me shoving that thing in there and messing up the bearings and journals and stuff, but I'll do that off camera. I'll probably just pop the transmission onto the engine off camera because that's super easy to do. And then yeah, uh, next episode, I definitely wanna go back to my car and work out the fuel system. But other than that, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment or message me on Instagram, like I said before. But thank you guys for watching and I hope you keep watching because there's more to come.